Hello, fellow horror fiends, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. Join us each week as our host explores a new, horrifying topic from the many realms of horror, such as film, television, and more, and returns to tell us his terrifying revelations. So sit back, relax, and get ready to face the horrors within. Hey, what's up, horror fiends, and welcome to another episode of The Horror Within Me. I am your host, Eric, and it is time for yet another Spooky Sunday episode. And this week, it's going to be a little bit different than what we usually do. Um, Usually, I pick one film that I like and review and rate, whether it be an older film, a newer film, or whatever the case is. This week, we're going to do a top five, and it's going to be the top five shark attack movies for me. Um, I decided to do this instead of what I normally do for two reasons. One, um, let's shake it up a little bit, right? We're on episode 18. Um, it doesn't seem like that many in, but there's been a lot of ups and downs and, and learning curves and experiences with me and the podcast, and I'm so happy with it. And we're really starting to grow and connect with people, and I, I, I just really love it. And as each week comes... I think of things that I want to do and and content I want to create for you guys. Um, And secondly, I could not think of one, just one Shark Attack movie that I wanted to to discuss for 30 minutes because I have, I have a few that are in my top five for different reasons. So that's kind of where we ended up. So before we get started on that, um, now, just be, you know, there's still going to be the rating system. We're still going to do terror trivia, but it's just going to be a little bit shorter um, reviews of each film and in the spaces of one through five. But um, I do want to talk about last weekend um, was my birthday weekend. My birthday was on Monday the um, 15th. I'm 36. Woo! Super exciting, right? Um, but I know you guys, were if you've been listening... I was going to Monster Monster Mania Con 50 in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, um, and it was so fucking amazing. It was my first ever horror convention. I can't believe that at almost, at 36, I had never been to one before. I've uh, been like under a rock or something this past like my whole life, as especially as a horror fan. Um, but it was. It was me, my husband, and I took my niece, who um, is also a big horror fan. And my husband made uh, the three of us the Horror Within Me t-shirts, and they came out so fucking good. They're all black with the Horror Within Me logo on the front, and on the back it has the tagline, um, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror, and it says now streaming. And it's just so amazing how supportive he is, and I just love him so much. Um, Because then I had like little business cards that I can give people that I meet that can just scan and go directly to the, to the hard within me website to hear all the uh, current streaming episodes. Um, so that was super fun. I actually met a guy, a vendor who used to host a podcast at Dave's radio. And he was talking to me about it and gave me really cool tips and ideas to reach out to other horror celebrities who, to invite them to be guests on the show. So that's something that I'm looking into and hopefully will be able to do in the near future. Um, I think that would be something that would be fun to switch it up. Not something that we do every week because I don't want it to stray too far away from what it is that we do here. But I think having other guests too, aside from just, you know, horror fans or horror fans and, that are actually in horror movies or television shows and or, or work on them. So that'll be super cool to interview people as well. But... Monster Mania Con was more than I thought it was going to be. I mean, the parking was ridiculous. It was so many people. I don't know what I expected, um, but I only uh, met one celebrity because it's expensive, but I wanted to meet just the one person that was going to be there out of everyone was Miss Danielle Harris from Halloween 4 and 5 as Jamie Lloyd, and she was also Annie Brackett in Rob Zombie's Halloween 1 and 2. She was also in the Hatchet series, which I didn't see, which I'm ashamed to say I've never seen. But I, 
do plan on watching them. She was also in Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead, Free Willy. She was in the she was the voice of Debbie from the Wild Thornberries. And her and Scott Taylor Compton have a podcast as well, which I didn't know about, called Talk Scary to Me. So check them out. Um, so I was starstruck. I didn't expect it. Never happened. I talk for a living. And when I got to my turn to to uh, talk to her and get my photograph taken and uh, an autograph, I couldn't really talk. <laughs> um, but she was super nice and the picture is cool and it's something that I will forever cherish. And uh, a few other, you know, people that I saw while I was there. So there were uh, people from Scream uh, movies. So Matthew Lillard, Jamie Kennedy... David Arquette was there, but unfortunately, I didn't get to meet or see any of them. They their lines were ridiculously long, and you know it it would have been really cool to have seen them. Uh, there was a um, Julie Benz from Buffy who played Darla, and she was in Jawbreaker. I don't remember her character's name, but she was next to Danielle Harris's table, and she had her table. And I didn't meet her, but I was very close, and she seemed so sweet. She looked beautiful, and she was very engaging with the fans. I thought that was amazing. She was talking to little girls, and I thought that was so cool. I saw the guy, Zach, that played Billy in the Gremlins movies. He was super He was super cool. The guy that played Pinhead was there from the Hellraiser, Hellraiser film series. Uh, Dick Warlock from... Halloween 2 played the shape of, you know, played Michael Myers in Halloween 2 was there and a couple other guys from that movie, Lance Guest, and I can't remember the other guy's name, Jimmy and the other paramedic that were the ones that got Lori were were there. Um, Kane Hodder, who played Jason, was there. I met him when I was very young. Um, I didn't have a chance to sneak a peek at him either because I was there was just so many people around. Just really fun. So if you've ever, if you've never been to a horror convention, highly recommend it if you're a diehard horror, diehard horror fan. I didn't get my fucking speech corrected. <laughs> um, it's super fun. Super, super fun. But we're going to move on. Because we have five movies to talk about really quickly. And let's get started, okay? For Before the we jump into number five, I do want to do Terror Trivia. This week's Terror Trivia is going to be on theme as I try to keep them on theme. And this one, we're going to give credit and a shout out to my husband, Ryan, because he actually came up with the question. And the question is... My chair is squeaky. <laughs> That's not the question. <laughs> the question is... Where is the original animatronic shark that was used in Jaws now? Again, where is the original animatronic shark that was used in Jaws at now? And if you know the answer before I give it to you at the end of this show, head on over to the Heart Within Me uh, Facebook page and tag us and let us know that you knew the answer. Um, And... That's just super cool. <laughs> um, so that is the terror trivia question of the week. Um, speaking of the Horror With Me Facebook page and the website, just uh, wanted to let everyone know that Spooky Shakers page is on the website is now live. There are currently three cocktails on there that are fun themed um, that Jenny has created. So go check them out. They're super fun, delicious. And we're going to have a photo shoot, which will be super cool in the coming weeks that we're going to add to the website. And they're going to be on the Facebook page and Instagram as Featured Drinks, um, Featured Spooky Shakers of the Week. So that's something else we're doing. We're also gathering and um, gathering some information and getting ready to launch a pre-order of the Har Within Me shirt. So if you're a fan of the podcast and you'd like to support small, you know, podcasters and you like the Har Within Me, you can pre-order a shirt. I'm not entirely sure of what the price is going to be yet, but it's not going to be super expensive. Um, also going to be some stickers that we're going to be doing. So keep an eye out for that if you're interested in it. So that is coming soon. And now let's go on to the top five shark must see shark movies before the end of the summer now i'm doing this at the end and middle of august because i didn't want to do it during shark week in july and i didn't want to do it in june at the beginning of summer because i am terrified of sharks and if i had done an episode analyzing different shark movies with different things i wouldn't have gone to the ocean this year not and i'm from jersey i go to the jersey shore i would not have gone in the beach and i was actually at the beach last sunday um and 
it's still terrifying. <laughs> I like it, but I'm still just terrified of sharks. I saw some dolphins. I'm like, what if they ain't dolphins? What if it's the fucking sharks? <laughs> I know. Unrealistic, but not really. They come, you know? I mean, it's rare that they attack, I think they say, but, you know, I don't trust nobody. But anyway, coming in at number five is Jaws the Revenge, which was released in 1987, directed by Joseph Sargent, and distributed by Universal Pictures. It stars Lorraine Gray as Ellen Brody, Lance Guest as Michael Brody, at has Michael Caine as Hoagie and Judith Barcy as Thea Brody, who unfortunately was killed in 1988 by her father, who killed her and her mother and then himself in a murder-suicide. Um, very sad. She was also uh, a voice of one of the characters from the Land Before Time movie. Um, very sad. She was uh, promising, and it, it's just terrible. Very young, very young. Um, and obviously, Ellen Brody's character is reprising, you know, from the original Jaws movie, uh, as the wife of the police chief, Martin Brody, who, and the movie has passed from a heart attack after the events of the second film. Um, it doesn't really say when. I think it's mentioned in Jaws 3 or something. But the movie is, you know, the beginning, one of the Brody kids is killed, um, and the shark is, like, and I, I guess out for revenge against the Brody family. I don't really know. Like the, I, I feel like that's what she feels, and it's like unrealistic to think that i guess but we're talking about a movie from the 80s that was cashing in on the success of the previous films so i mean they have to do something right to keep the franchise alive which it didn't because it was the final entry in the jaws franchise um so let's do the rating system i'm gonna rate each movie and we're going to do Shark Teeth as the rating system. And for number five, Jaws the Revenge, I'm going to give it a five out of ten Shark Teeth. Which, I was shocked that this was going to do go that route, because in my memory, you know, Jaws the Revenge is one of my top... Obviously, still in the top five, but I just didn't expect it to be at the end of the list. Because it, it, for nostalgia purposes, I just love it so much. But, uh, you know, analyzing it compared to the other ones in my list, it just, it's so fanatical that, you know, it, it is what it is. I It will forever hold a place. And I even made a TikTok recently where it's like, name a scene from a movie that scarred you as a child. And one of the scenes that scarred me was in this movie with Thea, who's on the banana boat. And the shark comes up and attacks and gets the woman next, like behind her. And that's probably where my fear of sharks has come from. Um, so yeah, that is, that is, um, my rating for Jaws Revenge. We give it a five out of 10 shark teeth. And if you want to know where you can stream Jaws Revenge to watch it, you can find it on Amazon Prime or free on Tubi. Now, coming in at number four, we have 47 Meters Down, which was released in 2017, directed by Johannes Roberts and distributed by Entertainment Studios Motion Pictures. It stars Claire Holt as Kate, Mandy Moore as Lisa. Um, this movie was very fresh to me, very uh, new. It follows the two sisters, Lisa and... What was her name? Lisa and Kate. And listen to me. <laughs> I've got to look at my notes. And they go in on a boat, and they go to the ocean, and they go in a shark cage to drop down to watch the sharks, and Mandy Moore's character's terrified. But the cable breaks, and they drop 47 meters down and hit the bottom of that of the ocean. Um, and their oxygen tanks are running out soon, so they have to get out, but the in, waters are infested, and there's a good twist ending. I'm not going to give away if you haven't seen it. Um, it is, it was new in my, um, in my opinion. It was a different take, which most of these movies that are on my list have a different approach to shark attack movies, so I thought it was very clever. Mandy Moore did an amazing job. As always, I've always been a Mandy Moore fan since she came out with Candy, her song, in the 90s. And her character, Rebecca Pearson, I just think that she's very well-rounded. I think she has a beautiful voice, but she's also a phenomenal actor. So she really did a, an amazing job in that movie. And I think um, there was a sequel that I haven't seen. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, when there comes to sequels, to really... Um, box office, lack of a better term, theatrical release movies with the high stars. And then there's a sequel that's direct to video. I'm very hesitant 
to watch it because sequels, even that are with the stars and also theatrically released, have a very hard time doing well. I feel like director video sequels that are with lesser known actors to just are almost impossible to to do well. It, it just it doesn't it can't meet expectations. Not to say that it's not good, and it probably can have a cult following later on in life, but it's just very difficult. So I haven't seen it. I can't judge to say what this one is. If anyone, if any of you have seen it, let me know what you thought of it, um, but I haven't. So let's rate number four with the shark teeth 47 meters down. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 shark teeth. It was inventive. It was creative. It... It was believable, a situation that could happen in a sense of a way. Um, just very different. I very much enjoyed it. So moving on, let me flip my note page. Coming in out. Wait, before we do that, if you want to know where it's streaming, you can find it on Amazon Prime. 47 meters down. I'm sure it's not free. It might be. I don't know. I didn't look it up, but it's on Amazon Prime. All right. <clears throat> Ready? Number three, Deep Blue Sea, which was released in 1999, directed by Rennie Harland and distributed by Warner Brothers. It stars Saffron Burroughs as Dr. Susan McAllister, Thomas Jane as Carter Blake, LL Cool J as Sherman Preacher Dudley, and Samuel L. Jackson as Russell Franklin. This movie, I, 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 I remember very, very well. I went to the movies to see it. I was about 12 or 13. And it's based about, basically, the premise of the movie is... They are a floating scientific facility in the middle of the ocean <clears throat> that are testing uh, mako sharks for a uh, cure for Alzheimer's disease. Because I believe the main girl's main woman, Susan McAllister's, one of her parents had passed from Alzheimer's. And it was, you know, traumatic. And that's why she's in the business. So she's almost a little, you know, obsessed with uh, the drug that they're testing. But obviously, the shark movie, things go wrong. They become so smart, and they get out, and they begin attacking and killing the people there. Um, I like the idea of it, you know, testing on animals and it backfiring. And I like that they use mako sharks and not great white sharks because it's always a great white, you know. Um, but which, which is terrifying, but I really enjoyed this as well. Like I said, they keep changing the the situations that these people were in. It's not just your normal shark attack movie. I thought it was super cool. There's an iconic scene with Samuel L. Jackson and his monologue and what goes on there. I just thought, I just vivid, I can see it in my head now. If you know, you know. Um, very well done. Um, the, I love LL Cool J. I love his 90s rap. I love his acting. I thought he was very well. I don't haven't seen him in anything in a while. I don't know what he's doing, but... You know, he was in Halloween H2O. I think he brings a lot of balance to movies because he's a good actor and he has good ways of timing the com the comedic relief in, in these horror movies and it's not over the top. Whereas, for my opinion, Buster Rhymes in Halloween, H or in Halloween Resurrection was just too over the top with the kung fu and shit. Like, that was just too much to me. LL Cool J's got a really good balance, you know, and this is just me basing things on rappers in horror movies. Like... <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I am a huge Busta Rhyme fan. Like, like, I just love his music, but the Halloween thing was a little too much for me. Um, but yeah, um, I thought Deep Blue Sea was well done. I thought it was inventive. I thought that they, for its time, the cinematography was was good. And it was a movie that I enjoyed and would see watch over and over again. So that's why it came in at number three. Let's give it a rating, though. For Deep Blue Sea, I'm going to give it 7 out of 10 shark teeth. And you're going to think, why would you give it a lower rating than you did for 47 meters down, but keep it at a higher place? I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> because 47 meters down, to me, is more believable than what happened in Deep Blue Sea, but Deep Blue Sea was more fun and action-packed for my taste in a shark movie which is why it's at number three um the ending with what's going on at the end was very uh shocking to me i thought i thought the acting was well done i just really really enjoyed it and if you want to know where you can stream deep blue sea now it is on hbo max if you're a subscription if you have a subscription or on tubi now 
Coming in at number two on my list of must-watch shark attack movies, we have The Shallows, which was released in 2016, directed by Wam Kale Sarah. If I said that right, I don't know. There's always one. And distributed by Sony Pictures, starring Blake Lively. Um, amazing movie. And this was difficult to balance on one or two, my top one or top two, because I really, really really like the shallows um and if you don't know what it is it's basically um a surfer who is out surfing gets attacked by a shark and is stranded um stranded on like this little rock thing like i think it's like 200 they said 200 meters i read online from shore or something like that and it has to think quickly because the high tide is coming in or something and it, the rock that she's on is going to be underwater and then she knows she can she can be uh, killed and it is so well and i also love blake lively i heard she was pregnant when she made this movie which is awesome you know like she did such a really good job but i like her in general but i also really like the storyline again another fresh look at a shark attack movie um not as fanatical as like we said jaws of revenge where we think this shark is stalking a family but but possible like we could be in the ocean during a feeding frenzy or a feeding time and then that, that's just a fixation. We never know. Like, we tend to forget that we are just another species on this planet, right? And when we are in the ocean, we are in other animals' territories and we get all, like, shocked when things happen that are just a part of their nature. Um, and that's even scarier because we put ourselves in situations and then we get mad thinking that we, we give these other animals uh, some sort of conscience that isn't real. This is a human thing, and society has built a lot of, of well, I don't know how to explain it, like, I guess, veils of reality, in my opinion. So, The Shallows is very well done. Um, I love it. It's just, uh, okay. We're going to give it a rating. And the rating system that I'm going to do is the same, but the rating I'm going to give The Shallows is the first time I'm ever doing this on the hard within me. I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 shark teeth. Um, I really think it was that well done. I think that the acting was great. I think the location was amazing. I think the story was amazing. I think that the cinema cinematography was also just really well done. The shots are well done. And then something I want to point out in these movies that I like is it is really difficult sometimes to do a... A movie like this where you have sharks or whatever other animals that are attacking humans and you have to make it believable and i point this out because there's actually a new shallows out i think it's called shallows the reef on um, exclusively on shutter which i actually started but didn't finish but as i just contradict saying i usually don't watch direct to video but i was like whatever i was kind of curious but one of the things i noticed in that movie is that all of the shots of the sharks are clearly um, of sharks. Just they pulled footage from other things that aren't really involved in the movie. And it's very tricky to make it believable. And the movie so far that I've listed, I think it's very believable. The, they have the budget for it. Um, it just makes it feel real. Um, and that's why I think that, you know, the shallows is the 10 out of 10 and it was very, it's very like a small minute detail of why it's not at number one. Um, but we're going to, before we get to the number one must watch Shark Attack movie before the end of the summer, we're going to do an honorable mention of two movies. The first one is going to be the Sharknado franchise. <laughs> I am sure that you guys are like, why is Sharknado not on there? Because it has such a huge cult following because it was even in my pop culture class we had to study about, like, talk about it because it is, like, it just blew up on sci-fi. There's, like, several ones. I like Tara Reid. I've never seen them because it was so fanatical to me, but I'm going to go and watch them just because I can't go through entire life as a diehard horror fanatic fiend and never have seen the Sharknado movies. So that is an honorable mention. And then the movie The Meg, um, I thought was really fun. Um... You know, it had the action, it had the shark, and I love the Megalodon uh, idea. Like, that's terrifying, too. Like, I the pictures that you see online of, like, the Megalodon compared to other great whites, it just, the prehistoric dinosaur shark terrifies me. And I can't think of that being in inside, like, the ocean still. Like, oh, my God. Like, oh, it was amazing. But 
There are the honorable mentions. And coming in at number one for the must watch shark attack movie before the end of the summer is you probably guessed it the jaws 1975 directed by steven spielberg and distributed by universal studios we have starring rory schneider as police chief martin brody we have robert shaw as quint and richard dreyfus as matt hooper now let me explain i had you know it is, I'm at a loss of words because you think, oh my God, there's so many movies that happened before, after Jaws. And that you might not agree with me on this, but I had to really think about it. And the more I think about the original Jaws, the more I appreciate it. It is, it's, first of all, it stands the test of time. There has never been a remake to Jaws. That says a lot. There are remakes to every fucking thing. Nobody has remade Jaws. The story, the acting, the visuals, everything is so well done, even for its time. Like, that shark was believable enough for that time. It's still very scary. Um, The tension that it brings, Steven Spielberg is amazing at that. Think of his other movies like Jurassic Park, E.T., like whatever. It's just so well, it's such a good story, you know, and... You think about the this this police chief who's trying to you know there he's a police chief of the small you know beach town and there's a great white shark that is stalking the shores, and that happens it could happen right and it's not you know it's not just a normal shark it's like attacking people like there's a few iconic scenes there's three that stand out to me obviously the opening scene with the skinny dipper who goes in and it, it gets attacked and is being drugged back and forth back and forth that is. One of my worst fears, because you never know it's coming from below, right? The second scene, and I think to me, one of the most traumatic scenes in cinema history, because it's so taboo, and it doesn't happen often enough, especially then, is the scene where they're all at the beach for, I guess it's Memorial Day weekend, the opening which the mayor did, you know, doesn't listen to Brody's warnings of a shark and not to open the beach. They're all in the water, and there's a little boy in a raft, and the shark attacks him, and it's like a splashing scene. You see, like, a fin take over, and you hear the boy screaming and crying, like, screaming underwater, and there's blood everywhere. And his mom was reading a book, and everyone's running out, and then she's looking for her son. It fucked my head up. Still fucks my head up. It's 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 one of those scenes that are really difficult to watch because of the kid. It's like the, you know, like, Gage in Pet Cemetery, the original. Like, oh. It, no matter how many times you've seen the movies, you cringe and you just can't ever be fully prepared to watch it again. That's good filmmaking. <laughs> the third scene that was very uncomfortable for me was Quint's death. When the sh- he's in the shark's mouth and he's kind of on the boat and it's quiet. It's very unnerving, very quiet sounding um, scene, in my opinion. And then like I think of the barrels and just everything about the movie is amazing it deserves the number one spot after so many years still it's still number one i think it will always be my number one it has the iconic theme no matter if you've seen the movie or not you hear that derna 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 you know what that is and if they played it on a loudspeaker at the beach i bet your ass you'd be out of that water in a fucking heartbeat because it's terrifying. Let's give it the respect it deserves. It will always be the heavyweight champion of shark attack movies in the summer. It is a staple. You must watch it. <laughs> and if you haven't seen it, we have to figure that out. I don't even think my husband has seen it. <laughs> but I will watch it before the end of the summer too. I will preach, you know, practice what you preach, right? Um, but I forgot to tell you guys where The Shallows is streaming. I believe it's streaming on Amazon Prime. And if you want to watch Jaws, that is also on Amazon Prime and Tubi for free. I don't have Tubi, but I'm going to look into the pricing. I have so many fucking streaming services for, for content that I'm looking into that I, I already have. But then I get overwhelmed because I don't know which one to watch. <laughs> but let's give our rating system for Jaws. And for Jaws, the original Jaws... The 1975 OG Jaws, we are the second time in one episode and in history, we're going to give it a 10 out of 10 shark teeth. It is a classic. It is unmatched. It will forever be the best shark movie to watch in the summer. That is right. Another 10 out of 10. 
that concludes the top five must-watch Shark Attack movies. Uh, let me know if you agree or you don't agree or which ones you think should have made the list. Um, and let's go and answer the terror trivia question. Okay. Last time. The question was... Where is the original animatronic shark that was used in Jaws at now? And the answer is at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. It is a 25-foot shark and has been there since 2016. And the museum has been open since April 30th, 2021. So that is the answer to Terror Trivia. Uh, again, let me know if you got it right. And that concludes this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. I want to say thank you to everyone who has spent their day, have some of their day with me, listening to me rate and review horror movies and talk about why I love horror and just, you know, connecting with me um, through this this content and this media. And if you are a fan of the horror within me, please rate, comment, review the show because the more reviews get me in front of more other, you know, more fans of horror that might enjoy the show as well and when you are not listening and you want more horror within me content you can find it on facebook instagram tiktok youtube at the horror within me um it's super fun we're doing so many cool things like i mentioned um the t-shirts the stickers the spooky shakers and it's just so fun and i'm having a blast doing this with all of you and just connecting and i hope that you're having as much fun as I am and then we can keep growing, right? So tell me what else you want to, you know, if you have reviews or or you want me to review a certain movie, drop in my Facebook and tell me what movie you want me to review. I'm open to always finding new horror movies because there is an endless amount of horror movies and subgenres out there that we can talk about every week. So um, let me know. And until next time, fiends, stay spooky.